it is Jack, back up in this bitch for 10 litres fitness. And welcome back to 10 litres tips. A series of short, informative videos giving you tips and tricks on living this bodybuilding and fitness lifestyle. Okay, so today we're going to talk about tracking your progress, right? How to do it, or how I do it, and why, why it's important, okay? Why you need to do it. So, okay, to begin with, why it's important, um, pretty much because Obviously, my last video in the 10 Leaders Tips series was on plateaus. So, by tracking your progress, you're going to know, obviously, if you are making those gains, and when those gains come to a halt, and you reach these plateaus. So, and then hopefully, uh, because you're, what you're tracking it all, you'll then know how to, how to then break that plateau, and carry on making those important gains, right? Because, let's be honest, no one wants to be that guy who's, you know, doing the same shit month on month, you know, and all that time just making no progress in their gains because for a lot of people that's very demotivating and will ultimately cause them to um, just lose interest in it and uh, ultimately fall the fuck off so let's try and avoid that and keep you guys stable okay so <clears throat> ways of tracking your progress um, there's a, there are a lot of ways to do this I mean the ones that I that I fuck with are um, I, uh, I track my, my track my macros on my, my fitness pal, so calories and then uh, proteins, carbs and fats. Um, other than that, there's I weigh myself. Um, I, I usually weigh myself daily, and I also, in addition to that, I uh, keep a log of my lifts in the gym. You know, uh, from each session. Uh, and the reason that I choose to do these ones, I know there are others, and I'll get to those in a minute. But um, the reason that I keep on top of uh, these three, three things, so macros, body weight, and performance in the gym, is because from those it's very easy to determine whether what you're doing is effective or not. And it's apparent how it needs to be changed if it's not giving you the results you want. And the reason for that is because breaking, breaking the, the cycle of body building down into uh, bulking and cutting, right? So you're either trying to gain quality mass or, you know, um, drop body fat whilst maintaining muscle. You know, one of those two things at any time. What you realise is that <clears throat> you're trying to gain quality mass, so you're bulking. Um, things that you need to be in place for that are a caloric surplus, um, the right macros, and uh, you, you should be experiencing... Uh, performance gains in the gym, right? So, by monitoring these three, you can see that by tracking your macros, you, you're going to have an idea of your caloric level, you know, that you're trying to hit each day. And then, so what you, and then to determine whether that's actually in a surplus, which is necessary for you to gain that muscle. Um, if you are in surplus, you're going to see your weight going up, which is the second thing you're tracking, right? On a daily basis, you're keeping a log of your, your weigh-ins. So if you're achieving that caloric surplus, you've established a uh, weight gain of some kind in the first place. So once you've established that weight gain on the bulk, to ensure that it's a quality weight gain, you, you should find that if it is you are gaining muscle, your performance is going to be improving in the gym. So you're going to find that your lifts are going up. And then inversely for the cut, you're going to see that you should find, keeping on track of your calories, um, by tracking your macros, but your weight should be going down on the scale and then your performance in the gym you should find that if you're not losing muscle you should be maintaining your performance in the gym I mean it's highly unlikely that you're going to see improvements whilst you're on a cut I mean it's possible I've had it happen myself but what you should be shooting for is to just keep your performance at the level at a constant level if it if it decreases then that means you have lost muscle which is something you would expect on a cut anyway because you're restricting your calories, but you want to keep performance in the gym, attempt to keep it steady, and then whilst the scale going down. Okay, and then, so in both situations, what you're going to find is, if the scale's not going up or down as you require it to, then because you're tracking your macros, you know that you can make a controlled increase to your calories, increase or decrease, to achieve that weight gain or loss as required. And then, you can see whether your training is effective in building or maintaining muscle by uh, staying on top of your performance in the gym. 
Okay, now, those are just the things that, that I manage, that I keep on top of, as well as I said, as I said before, uh, take progress pictures every so often, so, okay, so beyond that, of course, there are other things you can track if you want to. I mean, I've known people to use uh, body fat calipers, you can buy those on the internet. Um, I'm not really sure about the price, I'm not really looked into that because, like I say, I'm good with just those three things. Uh, beyond that, you can measure your body parts as well, so you know, measure the size of individual muscles. But like I say, with bulking, cutting, gaining and losing fat, uh, bloating and shrinking due to water retention, I mean, for me, that makes both of those really... I mean, it's, it just puts me off using it a bit because I think I'd get a bit caught up in my head and I'd probably end up using them wrong and, you know, I mean, it's fine if you want, but for me, I just don't think it's necessary, right? Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say on that today. I hope that's been helpful. This has been uh, 10 Leaders Tips, episode 2. I have been Jack with 10 Leaders Fitness. I'll see you guys in the next one.